Hello and welcome to this week's Courtyard Club Call. Oh shit, that was yesterday. It's Wednesday, it's the live show um, and it is me, Waggy, in charge. Um, this, as you can tell, we've started late. Um, two things, well, you might notice is that to the that side of me, that side of me is not Russ. Um, Russ is not here, he's decided to go on his jollies. So two issues I've got with that. One going on these jollies during the season, um, and especially towards the end of the season when it's quite crucial. Um, and secondly, and most importantly, he scarpered and left me in charge. What on earth was he thinking? As you can see, it's all started well. We're only four minutes late. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the, <laughs> the show must go on. Um, yeah. <laughs> The show was go on, so welcome to this week's Car Crash County Live podcast. <laughs> I've decided that we're going to change this up. The first thing we're going to do is uh, get in the resins. So this episode is getting in the resins. There, we're done now. <laughs> I'm, I'm prepared one as well. <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll do proper ones later. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I will introduce, as I say, assisting and supporting me is uh, Mr. Mark Brockerbank, regular to the show and hopefully a steady head. How you doing, Mark? I'm very well, thanks, Waggy. How are you, mate? Uh, a little bit nervous, but you know, we'll we'll get through it. We'll get, we'll through, get it. through it. We're, yeah, we're men of means. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, we do have a first-time fan guest on this week. Um, I will get him out shortly, uh, and I'll apologise to him first. Uh, but he did. We did manage to get the usual questions to him. So uh, he did tell us his first game was in 1992. I'm not going to tell you which one. I'll let him explain that. Best games were definitely 1997 and I think 2021 and 2022, if I've got my dates right, but everybody knows that I'm crap with dates. So we will get him out. And I think, hopefully, I should have... Hello, Rob McCloy. Hi, how you doing, guys? You all right? Oh, yes, doing exceedingly well. What was Russ thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Well, yeah, I mean, anything apart from what's already gone wrong. So we'll be all right. We'll be we'll all be. right. Of course we will. So we have hopefully got some sort of running list. Um, obviously, uh, we'll have a talk to you, Rob, a bit later on. But you said your first game was in 92, which was the um, Peterborough playoff final, you said it, it was? was? Yeah, it was, right. yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, so that gives your age up as much as, so you're in you're in good company. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Chesterfield away, 97. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the Bolton uh, game in the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. And Halifax, was that pr the promotion game? Yeah, yeah. 21-22. Yeah, yeah, I've got them right, haven't I? think uh, yeah yeah it was, it was two years ago wasn't it yeah 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 so we'll talk about the um forest green and wimbledon games um we Can will I just say what I, I, i've i've never answered the questions either have you not no oh, that, you me, you've been that, that big bloke and that ross never asked me. <laughs> oh yeah, well just... go on then can you remember what your first game was I certainly can Go on. Can he probably tell you the date to within about a day or two? 24th of September, 1984. Wow. Who did we play? It was a minor, was a minor game. Uh, Stockport County nil, Liverpool nil. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's. I suppose that's a good one to go to for your first game. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, but I, I would agree with Rob. Best game, Chesterfield away. 97, 97 season. Yeah, takes some beating that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, there we go. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so it's your fav favorite games. What's your favorite games, then, Mark? Across favorite all the games, games, well, the Chesterfield ones, which is um, um, oh, the the uh, the Stoke playoff semi final back in what was it, 92, something like that. The the home game, Peter Ward's free kick. That that's high on my list to be fair. Right, cool. 
And, we'll have uh, to do it officially when when Russ is yeah. back next time you come on. I don't want to. I don't want to take Rob's limelight. Yeah, you know, I just want. To no, no, it's, no, it's right. We'll we'll do it properly next time you're on. Then I, I can yeah. cope, Mark. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> it might. I might just leave you two to chat, and I'll just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> like you're crying in a corner. Yeah, yeah. I'll just turn, <laughs> just yeah, yeah. turn the video off and you'll just hear sobbing. <laughs> you're on mute, Waggy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll talk talk about the upcoming Sutton game as well. Uh, we've got stats, stats, stats. We've got, obviously, coming up to the end of the season, Mr Brocklebank has been working hard. Um, not well, no, that's that's problem. Problem. I've, I've got <laughs> yeah. work that, so uh, I'm bombarding you with stats at lunchtime. So yeah, yeah, so we've got we've got lots, lots and lots um, of stats that we can go through later on. Uh, we will do getting the resers. Um, have you got one lined up, Rob? Uh, I've got more than one. Depends on oh. what you're going to let me have. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Did, I, I didn't find it very hard. <laughs> <laughs> When you're only on once or twice, you don't seem to. But it's when you're on every week, you start struggling. So I just start. I've got literally, I've got a, a notes on my phone, and every time that I think of something, I just add it to that, and I put a green tick. Well, if, like, if you like, I'll only do one, and I'll text you the one. You're gonna be next yeah. week. <laughs> I said I've already got my resins for this week, so. <laughs> So I mean, yeah. What a, I mean, what a difference four days makes, doesn't it? The I mean, away at Forest Green. Did either of you go to the Forest Green game? Yeah, no, I was you did. Yeah. You went there. Yeah. What did you think of it, Rob? Because I know we had um, Jimmy when we did the club call. Um, he went down there as well, um, and he seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I listened to that. Yeah, it was. It was brilliant. We were really, really good. I think you know we've we sort of stuttered a little bit, haven't we, in um, in the last few weeks? Um, and they were really, really good at Forest Green. Um, they looked dangerous. Um, I think everybody was probably. And it was interesting because people were talking about like who should have been man of the match, but I don't think anybody was under seven out of ten. You know, there were some really, really good performances, and we were so dominant. People like Ethan Pye and even were, were so high up the pitch. Um, yeah. For, for a lot of the game, and um, yeah, we were just, we were really really good. Um, nice to see, um, yeah, Callum Camp starting to look like you know the the player that we all thought he was going to be. So he was a bit stop start last season, wasn't he? And yeah. Brilliant, CB Torre doing well, and yeah, it was it, obviously Rico Richards looked really good, and it, yeah, the, the whole team difficult to single people out. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think Mark similar? Yeah, very much. You know, my three-word uh, report was walk in park because I couldn't have that in it. You know, so uh, yeah, that, that, uh, it was. I say, I don't even. We, we certainly didn't get out of second gear, did we? Yeah, I no. thought it was very much. And then three nil, it was very much first gear, wasn't it? It do. But yeah. they just. We said it on the on the club call. They just didn't offer anything. Even you know, they was. They didn't look. They weren't pressing us. They were just letting us do what we wanted to do. And then you look at the flip side, they went and beat Crew, didn't they? Forest Green. They yeah, beat Crew yeah. Green on how, Monday. How bad is that? Away. For anything on Monday. Yeah. yeah. It's just it was just ridiculous. But yeah, I think, I think yeah, for, I don't think anybody had a bad the, game. For all the good work the club have done recently, putting on an open training session mid season's really good. It's just, you know, next time could they do it a bit closer to home than Forest Green? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Oh, brilliant. I um, thought it made the, uh, thought it made the uh, lineup prediction fairly straightforward for Monday. The fact that he was able to rest players by just asking them to sit down in the middle of the pitch and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what we I mean. yeah. I think it was interesting that Ben Hinchliffe should have paid to get in and things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, he yeah. said uh, he came out with a couple of good John Kieran's and he said uh, they were very much powder puff defending and um yeah Hinchliffe should have bought a ticket because he's basically a spectator wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He just he was just absolutely yeah. They were absolutely hopeless. Yeah. Absolutely hopeless. I think, I mean, they, they say, and obviously we will go on to the Monday game, but they say you should never change a, a you know a winning lineup. And we'd just beat MK Dons the week before 5 0. 
Uh, yeah. But he did make a couple of changes, didn't he? I mean, I was, quite, I was quite surprised with Richard starting, but as you say, he he looked really good, didn't he? Um, but yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't quite go to the to the point of saying that I'd have looked good playing on Friday. But I think we could have put we could have put the kids out against them, couldn't we, on Friday? And I think we'd have still done we'd have still done yeah. all right. It's interesting though, because Forest Green have still got to play Wrexham and they've still got to play MK Dons as well. Well, including yeah. us. Their next five games are the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you you wouldn't. You'd, you'd be a bit concerned for them, wouldn't you? Yeah. You would, but as you say, you look at Friday's performance, yeah. but then you look at Monday and they go and they go and spank Crew three nil at their place. Yeah, nuts. Absolutely. It is. Not. It's, it is these. Um, yeah, these. Nobody. I, I think now. I mean, we've took obviously we've took nine points from the last three games from. After the Crawley game, when everyone was a bit doom and gloom, we've been a bit patchy and stuff like that. But I just think we've we, we, we've pushed on again, haven't we? we? We look like a team again, and you can see players players that we've got coming back and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. only gonna it's only gonna make us stronger, isn't it, for the back end of the season? Yeah, I think having a few lads who've been there, done it, been in promotion yeah. fights, all of a sudden they're they're like, yeah, we'll look after this, you know. Yeah. Paddy's been quietly magnificent over about like four or five games. Um, yeah. Not yeah. getting the headlines, but just doing a job here, there, and everywhere, knitting it together, yeah. Yeah. proper leadership. And He's got 15 goals as well. That's crept up, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Powell, another one who's just, just suddenly in camps as well. You know, just yeah. showing their experience, showing the know how. I think yeah. that's where. Yeah. Some of the other teams probably, you know, Clive might have another uh, opinion over on the chat, but I think as well, some of the other teams might just not have those guys in the building that we've got, and that might be why we've suddenly put three wins out of three together. Yeah. And we've managed it- less than a, and a waterlogged pitch, you know. So. Yeah. yeah. I um I watched the highlights of the Wimbledon game before, and John Kieran said something like, um, "And now we're down to only seven on the treatment table." Um, only seven. <laughs> only seven. And, um, but <laughs> I, I, do, I do wonder that you know it could like you say, like you're saying, Mark, that because we've had so many people out for so long, we've got we've probably only got three or four in that side who've actually played anything like a full season. So there will be more fresh than yeah. there would have been. Yeah. Mm. As may be reflected in today's uh, EFL awards uh, announcements. Yeah, if we've got time, we will go through. <laughs> we will we will touch on them, I think, if we do get time later on. Um, but yeah, but I think yeah, maybe it is. That's because we've not had we've not had a settled eleven, have we? We've we pretty much every single game, apart from between Friday and Monday. I think that's probably the first time that we've put the same eleven out yes. um, for for well since I can remember. I can't remember the last time that even in that in the twelve game run, beginning we, of the twelve game run, we we. We were pretty yeah. much steady. It was only when, uh, towards the end, when we started picking up one or two injuries. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was where I got most of my fan up points. We bought <laughs> one line from them. Yeah. 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 That little run there kept me head warm in the winter, basically. That run. <laughs> <laughs> so then, flip side of the coin, we put out exactly the same side against Wimbledon on Monday. And I mean, me and you touch spoke at half time, didn't we, Mark? And it was, it, and they came and did a job, didn't they? They came to get a point. They came to wind us up. They came to just break up the play, frustrate us, and they they did it for eighty three minutes. Realistically, didn't they? They did it a slightly different way to the others because it wasn't necessarily you know, like the gamesmanship and all that kind of stuff. It was. We're going to sit in behind, you know, you're going to have to toss balls in the box and we're going to fancy ourselves with uh, three centre-halves who, yeah, they all, all three of their centre-halves had good games and two of them we obviously know very well. Um, and, uh, yeah, but they were a threat on the break. I mean, that, that number 38, the uh, you know, first half, he looked like he could outpace us, even outmuscle us a little bit, and he was a real threat. And obviously the set-pieces were... Uh, a major problem at times, or so not a problem, but they just look like they caused havoc. You know, yeah. they did. I mean, that number five with that that throw that he had was 
absolutely ridiculous. I mean, anywhere from the halfway line, he was getting it almost into the six yard box. And yeah. I think the one thing that I noticed in that is that we dealt with every single one. You know, you go back to that sort of dodgy patch that we had. Yeah. Balls were coming crew, in the box, Tranmere, set pieces, Tranmere crew. And we weren't getting anywhere near it or we weren't getting the second balls. Whereas against Wimbledon, that we, we dealt with them all the time, didn't we? But I'm going to put it out there. The, the change in the defence that's solidified is, is Ethan Pye coming back. Ethan yeah. Pye yeah. comes back in. We're suddenly keeping clean sheets. And, yeah, if Torre yeah. is able to play out on the left, he's starting to look yeah. the player we thought we got and so on, and rightly so. Um, and it's all just slotted in nicely, particularly with uh, Noyle coming back on the right. And, yeah, we, yeah, we look Noyle, defensively all of a sudden. In, yeah. Yeah, he's slightly there, are, there are some stats, aren't there, about Ethan Pye being in the side and out of the side this year. Somebody put him up. Um, I think it was after the Forest Green game. And um, it's something like two points a game with him in the side, but only 1.4 something with him out of the side this year. Right. Because um, uh, he, he missed, what did he miss? Ooh, nine, uh, 10, 11 games, something like that, wasn't it? I think he missed. So, yeah. Big miss. Yeah. 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 And, and he wasn't in the team at the very beginning of the season either. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right, actually. Yeah, he didn't yeah. play the first. Did he, did he play at Chef Wednesday? He might have played that, that one. I don't think he and played then, until. I had, a feeling he played at, I had a feeling he played at Walsall and he might have made a mistake for one of Walsall's goals, was the first away game. I have right. that sort of etched in my mind. Yeah. He, he was definitely not a consistent at the start no, of the season, no. I don't think, was he? No. Yeah, I think he made a couple of mistakes in his first two or three games, if I remember correctly. But everyone sort of because you could see that he you could see the talent that, that was there and oh, you could see and it was just like it's just it's a little bit learning curve, isn't it? It's, yeah. It was uh, well, he was playing at the season at Gateshead last year, wasn't he? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've got the recollections of Chally sort of calling him out a little bit in one of the early games for not playing the easy ball into the channel uh, and giving it away and led to a goal. So, yeah, absolutely spot on there, I think. Uh, but now, Pai, he's been the catalyst. And I think Horsfall just looks a better player playing alongside him. Ridiculous as yeah. that sounds, that as the senior partner, he suddenly looks better. But, uh, yeah, massive. Yeah. yeah. He just gives yeah. us that balance. Yeah, it does, and I think as we said, to, uh, uh, Torre getting a bit more confident. We was we talked in the club in the club call about him being next to Pi and Pi. Maybe you know maybe if a, if Burn was next to Torre, he might give him a bit more advice and try and bring him back up. Whereas you think the last sort of three or four games, he's had Paddy Madden on that left hand side with him, and just think that that sort of you know the seniority that Pad Madden's got, the the brain that he's got, he's just egged him on and, and brought a bit more of that confidence out of him and brought him back, to, as you say, to the player that we thought um, thought he, he always, you know, we that's the player that we signed, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like Paddy's got a lot more than what he actually does with the football about yeah. him. Yeah, he's a, he's a, you know, if ever, if ever there was a club captain, you know, he, you can see that he's, you know, he, he, does a, he does a lot more than just play. It's the standards, I think, he sets Monday to Friday as well, Rob. I think it goes on un, unknown the the levels that he is forcing players to reach in training the standards he sets with his professionalism yeah. and so on yeah. it's yeah it's and he, um, even if he's maybe. yeah even if he's not having a great game he still runs himself into the ground every game yeah, yeah in, this last, in this last run he's not getting subbed off as early as he was, probably mid and early yeah. season, you know, that kind of... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, now we want the uh, the leader on the pitch and uh, see it through. Yeah, definitely. First pun by Mr Dowden. There we go. It's great well, having it's... Pie filling the hole at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Kudos to Jamie as well for... He's one player that won't crumble. Uh, and somebody called Nick, you know, earning saying he's earning his crust as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, wonder who that might be. <laughs> Have you got your Rezzers note out, Waggy? 
<laughs> well, I think we've already put pundits in. I don't know if we'd... I've already, I've already, I've already made mistakes. I can't start getting rid of people. Can I? I can't stop putting pans in the in the resins. There's enough, nothing left for when Russ comes back. <laughs> like a big hole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd just be like this Wednesday void. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I think, but it's, 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 you could go through the whole team, couldn't you? I mean, Rick, I don't think Richards played very well on Monday, um, but he seemed to come out onto the left. Didn't, he didn't really seem to know what he was supposed to be doing. I think he got a bit lost. Um, That's why you have a squad. Uh, sorry? That's why you have a squad, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was I'm good. Just, I mean, it, the, the, we'll obviously come on to Monday, won't we? So uh, we'll leave it for now, but... Yeah. I was I was impressed with the crowd the on the 75th minute where the they just they knew it was a tight game and that we needed something and that the Cheedlen just got louder and louder and I think you could see that that helped with the players as well, didn't it? I thought that was really good. Um because I think it was a bit flat, but I think everyone was a bit nervy and thinking again, go back to the likes of last season, that was a game that we would probably have been nil nil and it'd have finished nil nil. Um, but um, what a strike by Bailey. And again, a Torre assist. Nice yeah. ball. Nice ball in from Torre. Great assist, but what a... Because um, I'm in upper tier three, obviously not far yeah. from you. And the, that curl as it came in, it was yeah. absolutely superb, sat behind it. But Torre played fabulously when he went over to right centre-back. We suddenly had another attacking dimension by having... A load of left footers on the right hand side. It just yeah. suddenly, yeah. You know, I'll give Challenger the credit because I always want to, but uh, all of a sudden we're playing balls inside rather than trying to go on the outside, and it just led to the goal, didn't it? Uh, it did, but it did seem to flummox them, didn't it? They just didn't know because it was the different different angles that the balls were coming in because it was coming from a left footer instead of a right footer. Um, yeah. I think you just you could see that, couldn't you? You just seen they just didn't know what to do with us. Yeah. Um, they just seemed a bit all over the shop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Hippolyte did well coming on the left. Just uh, gave us that legs to take it into the corner and run them a bit deeper and further. It was some good th- subs from the gaffer on Monday. Yeah, I, th- I think Miles Hippolyte's looked really good since he's come back. Not had a huge amount of chances, but. Yeah, he's been steady, hasn't he? He's, he's he's come on and done the job that he's been asked to do when he's when he's come on. But I think, as we sort of said, with Wimbledon was set up and they they were quite happy for us to try and play the ball to to Wotton all the time. As soon as we brought Alafi on, having that ball in behind and having to make them turn again, they just seemed to be a bit bit more dishevelled. But I don't think Tanto didn't look quite right. For me, yeah. he looked he, he looked knackered, didn't he? He came he's only on for half an hour and he yeah, did look yeah. he looked tired, really tired. He looked tired or he was carrying something because yeah. did you see him get a bollocking off Challoner for not uh closing the ball down? Sorry, Rob, I know you you didn't actually make it, did you? You wasn't you was working on Monday, wasn't you? So you Oh don't don't it's the last one I'm missing, but yeah, Is it? Right. Sorry, sorry to you know, sorry to, to talk about it. You missed about seventy odd minutes of absolute torment and, <laughs> and absolutely nothing worth talking about. But, uh, and and then we all go away really happy because yeah. the last ten minutes, fifteen minutes was way more memorable, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's um it's hard it's hard work concentrating at work when you don't know what's going on, that's for sure. Um, yeah, especially, especially yeah. not being able to listen to it or have anything yeah, to do with yeah. it. That's that's even worse. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I, suppose you... about, um, I was going to ask you about Wooten because um, I've I've seen a lot of people um, say you know that he didn't really have too much effect on the game. Do Do you think we're playing to his strengths? Because I I have this thing that his strength. I mean, I know he's a big lad, right? Of course, and he can hit the ball. He scored heavy goals and stuff. But I think he's really good with his back to goal. If you play it into his feet, he can hold it up. He can touch. He's got a good touch. He can bring people into the game. And um, there seems to be a bit of a temptation when he's in the side for us to lump it at him. And actually, I'm not sure that's the strongest part of his game. No, because he always seems. If he goes up for a header, he always seems to get a foul against him, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, he doesn't win many fouls, that's for sure. No, right, I think 
the last few weeks, I think that first touch has been letting him down. So we've been playing it into him with his, with his back to the goal and it's been bouncing off him. Normally, as you say, his, his close control is normally really good. Yeah. And I just think he's, that first touch has been letting him down. Um, but I think he, he he held it up quite a few times, didn't he? We did lump it up a bit against Wimbledon. Um, but I think it was the same. It was the same, yeah. Maybe we're not playing to his strengths, but it's it's a big flip, isn't it? Because this time last year, it was like, we can't play without Wotton. And now yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. we look like a better team without Wotton in it because we have a different, you know, yeah. different dynamic, isn't it? It's quite... Yeah. Quite a strange one. Is there, is there a bigger picture where we're actually trying to set up to make sure our subs have an impact? So it's a case of we play one way and then we can change it. Can and change it. All, all of a sudden, legs going behind as, yeah. against hiring defenders, you know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, Ryan Johnson up yeah. against Tanto with 15 minutes left. You, you've got to fancy him out there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's no, because he's that. been driven further and further back, run into the channels by Paddy and so on. And then it's, yeah. You know, so is, yeah. is there, a, I don't know, you know, but I would uh, guess. It's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of the criticism last year and at the very start of this year was that we didn't have a plan B, wasn't it? And um, I, um, I, I was reading. I haven't been in work today, as you might be able to tell. And I was. I've been reading some of the Wrexham and comments after their game last night, and uh, there were a few of their people saying we didn't have a plan B uh, last night. And um, and I um, and I think Mark, I think is that perhaps the point you're trying to make is that we do um, at the moment we have options, don't we? I think we've got a few different ones. I, I think the way. Uh, we, we suddenly switched. Uh, we're playing out to Torre a lot first, uh, first hour. And he was pulling it down, but he was having to come backwards because there's nobody ahead of him down that side. Second half, we decided, well, the number five's having a fun day against him and so on, winning the headers. Let's, let's go the other side. Connor Evans is weirdly good in the air. Weirdly good in the air. Like, he, yeah. he wins. And all of a sudden, we just started getting further up the pitch getting into the game a bit, you know, midfielders getting higher and things like that. And slowly, it wasn't dramatic, but, you know, we got back in. That raised the crowd. We talked a bit about the crowd, but I think as the comments coming in, the the, the change that last 15 minutes, 20 minutes, g and then, as I think uh, a few were saying in the comments, filtered down below a tip. It just all came together. So, yeah, but I think, yeah, the point... Uh, yes, same. I think Wooten is doing a very quietly excellent job. Um, Salford was a weird game, game of two arms, where he got clouted up to his head first half, and it was a case of who's getting fouled more, him or Smith, kind of thing. And neither of them got a free kick either. Um, second half, we played into his feet. He got one assist, didn't he, for Tanto as an equaliser. Yeah. We look a different team, you know. So, yeah, I don't think we're playing to his strengths when we use his aerial ability, I think. But also maybe when we're at home, he's playing with his back to goal with also a bank of four who five yards in front of that as well. So he's got a very small area to yeah. you know, work mm -hmm. in with those uh, yeah. longer balls, let's just say. Yeah. 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 So moving on to Sutton on Saturday, away at Sutton. Are you going, Rob? Yep. You are excellent. Yeah, you're down that way, aren't you? Yeah. It's one yeah. of one of my easier ones, yeah. Right, cool. Um, yeah, what are we what 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 do we think for that? Because they've won the last four now, haven't they? Um and they've played have they played a couple of decent teams. I can't remember who they've actually beat now. Well it's, it's second versus before. third in the form table, isn't it? We're second there third in the form table. Um yeah. So the yeah, they beat beat Forest Green at Forest Green, uh one yeah. nil. They've beat Accrington at home three one. They beat Salford away two one and on Monday they beat Swindon at home three one. So they've really changed that around, haven't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the thing is for them is that they've only got us and three more games, haven't they? Um so um, you know, they're they're pretty close to the end, whereas Colchester, of course. Um, with both their pitches, they've got quite a few um, games left to play, haven't they? Um, but then, you know, would you? Where where would you rather be? Would you rather have the points at this stage? I don't know. 
Don't know. It will be tight. I've always, I've always said I'd prefer to have the points than games in hand, unless it's us that's got the games in hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, it's, it is, isn't it? You know, if you've got the points, then you're you're of the 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 saying that you, yeah, yeah. I'd prefer to have the points in the bag. Yeah, yeah, but if you've yeah. got games in hand, it's the potential. And yeah. it's really tight at the bottom, isn't it? Because Grimsby being pulled out now. I'm Grimsby being yeah. pulled in, aren't they? Yeah, I think yeah. it's two out of those four, really, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I'm not so, sure. Salford on 47, got it on one of the other screens at the moment. So, yeah, Salford on 47. Then you got the run four, which is Grimsby 40 with six to play, Sutton 39 with four to play, Colchester 38 with about 16 games to play, and uh, fuck now, obviously, yeah, six, uh, seven games to play. But they'll just play one well on each pitch, as Rob says, you know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forest Green, 36, with five to play. So it's tight. Uh, Sutton need the points, possibly even more than we do. Ridiculous yeah. as that sounds. Yeah. It so, is. After all, Sutton... Have... Sorry, go on, Rob, carry on. I was going to say, Sutton, after all, they've got Harrogate away, Crawley at home, and they finish away at MK. And um, so you, they, 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 you're right, Mark, they need the points. I don't think... I don't think they can afford to sit in and play for a draw. I think they could do with three points, couldn't they? And maybe Especially that... being at home. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I yeah. think I'd, I'd prefer to be playing somebody like that because, as you said, they're, they're going to want to play football. Yeah. And you, they're, they're, they're at home. They need the three points. I think they'll come out of us. And I think that that suits us much more if a yeah. team like, you yeah. know, MK Don's, <laughs> they came they came at us and we you know fair enough you know, we could have been 2 0 down before we scored but we weren't and we took we we were clinical so i yeah. think we, yeah. we a game a team that comes out against us i think we're a lot more clinical and we're a lot more upbeat and faster because i yeah. thought against wimbledon we did look quite labored and quite slow moving the ball around the back whereas if a team is sort of trying to press us and everything then yeah. You know, we 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 seem to play we, we play a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Teams have worked out how to come to Edgeley Park, haven't they? But you know, we more times than last year, we've got through it, haven't we? I mean, I'm thinking yeah. of you know, Saturday. I'm thinking of Newport. Newport. Um, you know, a, there's two that would probably have ended nil nil last year, but we just found a way to get through. I mean, still, we've still had them, haven't we? We've, we've had Harrogate, we've had Swindon, we've had, you know, yeah. we've still had games where we haven't got through them. But um, there have been more games this year where we've got, um, you know, a narrow win. Um, I think we've st we've still created the chances, but we've just not been the clinic clinical as, like, say, certainly Swindon. Yes. We were much the better side, wasn't we? Oh, absolutely. Against yeah. Swindon. Yeah. Um but yeah, as it's just it's nine points from nine points from nine. We're now four points clear. It's yeah. Yeah. it's in our hands. We've yeah. I mean, up till obviously Wrexham playing last night, we was all on the same games, wasn't we? So we've now got yeah. a game in hand on Wrexham. Yeah. Um yeah. we'll we'll come to the points per game. Uh, that Mr. Brock, Mr. Brockbank did um, earlier, did th three weeks ago, was it now? Three yeah, the last one was 19th of March, and then I've yeah. just uh, updated it. Updated it it, today. I hit the refresh button and it did it all for me. <laughs> uh, not too much effort today, hence why I spent lots of time doing lots of other stuff. Um, <laughs> just on the other one, because I don't think we really want to show it, to Waggy, but... Um, Goals in each 15-minute segment of the game, Sutton are dreadful across the whole 90 minutes, apart from just before half-time. They are 10, 10 scored, 7 conceded in the 15 before half-time. Every other period, they are negative um, in terms of goals scored, goals conceded, and particularly late in the game. Yeah, So, might be a nervy one, um, and we might just have to live on our yeah on the edge just before half time because that's where they're strongest apparently there you go well, we're, strong, we're strong in the first 15 minutes of each half aren't we i think that's the two strongest ones for us first 15 minutes of the game minutes we're the only team in the league that's got positive goal difference in every 15 minute segment of the game so uh, yeah um 15 to 7 after half time 12 to 8 before half time so just for the benefit of 
everyone on just trying to understand this is goals scored versus goals conceded in each 15 minute segment of the games and Stockport are the only team in League Two that are positive in all six 15 minute segments um yeah Clyde Mansfield are next but after our time you're 10 10 15 minute after our time so there you go um, weirdly, Forest Green are identical to Sutton in that, in that just for our time, they're okay and the rest are dreadful. <laughs> I was quite surprised that actually on FopMob that they credited Forest Green with having a shot. <laughs> I, but I don't think anybody's been able to pin down which one they counted. No, I think it was because <laughs> if you see, and on FopMob, it was basically on the corner of the six-yard box and it was that one, I think John Kieran mentioned it, that they sort of it came, it was a bit of a scuffle, and one of their guys has just hooked his foot at it, and it's basically it's gone out along the six yard line. But yeah. so they class that class that as a shot. So it wasn't even on target. I mean, that's how <laughs> that's how crazy yeah. it is. An XG of zero. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. Um so, so go on. What do we think? Score predictions. Um, I know, I know. Russ is away. We we sort of tried to get a Sutton fan, um, but there isn't any. So, uh, so we couldn't. So it's just it's up to us to give the analysis. Um, go on. Score predictions. Rob's going, so he can have first dibs. Okay. <laughs> uh... Throw him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> County all win narrowly 2-1 Narrowly 2-1 Okay, so we're going to uh, Concede for the first time in Four games, three games Three games Oh no, it might be more than that So go on I'll, I'll go 3-1 County with a, a late consolation For them There you go Okay, I'm going to go with my pretty standard 3-0 uh, or 3-1 uh, I think it's, it's If we get an early goal like you know, an earliest goal before thirty minutes. I think that's it. I think they might think the confidence will go when they realise that they're playing. You know, playing us. We get an early goal that'll relax everybody, and then we'll go on to three nil, and then maybe let them get a goal in the 89th minute or something. Well, they need they need the points more than us. They do. They do. I'm not yeah, saying I want, but if we if we got a point down there, it wouldn't be a disaster. It no, would, you know? it wouldn't because I was talking to the guy I sit next to before the game started on Monday, and he said the way the way the table was, we needed thirteen points to be promoted. Yeah, guaranteed promotion. We need thirteen points before Monday's games. So we won, and Barrow drew, and that means now that we only need eight gate eight points to be guaranteed promotion from the next. Um, six games. So, I mean, it wouldn't be nice a season, we? but goal difference obviously being we, Yes, it. yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. And and that's assuming the other teams all get maximum well, points. Get maximum points. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't think they can, can they? Because um, uh, Mansfield go to Barrow on the last day. Absolutely. And Wrexham have got crew the week before they've got us. Yeah. But I don't so, think everybody can get maximum points yeah. either. So I don't know how that. Um, there's four games between the, between the top six, isn't there? There's MK Dons versus Mansfield, Crew versus Wrexham, Barrow versus Mansfield, and obviously Wrexham versus us. So, yeah. yeah. Um, hence, 86. There we go. I knew it was coming, Waggy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, see all these tabs open. These stats, 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 people. Stats, stats, stats. <laughs> so yeah, so this Mr. Brocklebank, uh, Brockbank, sorry, came came up with this. So these are the say the key date, key games of top six playing each other. Um, on the thirteenth, we've got MK Dons versus Manfield. Twentieth is Crew versus Wrexham, and then on the last day, Barrow Mansfield and Wrexham County. So, if the lower position team, as it is at the moment, as it is at the moment, wins the games, then 
Uh, we get Mansfield, 85, Wrexham, 85, Barrow, 85, MK Dons, 83, and Crew, 81. You've not actually put what we get. Is this... That, that, that's because, uh, you know, we have to be pessimistic and say, you know, we, we might scrub, you know, three points between now and the end of the season. Where does it get us kind of thing? So right, this okay. was purely on if these teams get max points or the best they can get, yeah, and then you've got to work out, well, what will we get in return? Okay. So if the higher team wins, Mansfield can finish on 91, but that obviously then drops... Um, Barrow and MK Dons down by three points each, as you can see in the middle one at the bottom there. Uh, for the benefit of the uh, audio listeners, just <laughs> ask all with this bit, you know. Um, <laughs> and then and then I did another one if it was drawn. So it all amounts to 86 points for guaranteed promotion, 92 to guarantee the title. But realistically, it'll probably be less than that because chances of those top six winning all their games, obviously it isn't actually possible anyway, but even if we could, um, you know. I don't I don't think anybody will. I don't think we will, will we? No, I don't think. That's why I say I think a point on Saturday isn't a disaster. It might feel yeah. like it, but... Um, yeah, it's... Well, they need the points. I mean, it'll be a disaster on Twitter, but that's another debate, really, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, is it's all it's all to play for, isn't it? These these all these different so I think should we should we move on to our XG for predictions? XG predictions. So these I I, I do quite like this, so if we look at, let's put it back up, uh, share screen. So this was after the Crawley draw. I think that was right, isn't it, Mark? It was, yeah, this was this was a depths of despair after the Crawley draw and Twitter. Yeah. So we, we went through, yeah, we went we went through this um, yeah, on the on the pod. Uh, and it all pointed towards us having to get some points at Wrexham, uh, basically, based on the last uh, the last four last four games on the nineteenth of March. Mansfield were an average of one point five. Milton Keynes uh, were two point two five, and we were one point five. Um, so that would give us eight four. Give Mansfield eighty four points. Milton Keynes eighty two point seven five, and us eighty one point five. We know we can't have point fives and point seven five, but. It's there or thereabouts. Um, uh, and then the MK Don's home game, everyone. This was. Yeah. 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 And then we have the yeah. new predicted with our three games winning run. So now everything looks rosy. <laughs> so our average points per game for the last four now is 2.5. Wrexham is 1.5. Mansfield are down to one. So that would give us 92 points. Wrexham, 80.5 80 points finishing in second. Mansfield in third, finishing with 79. And then it'd be MK Dons on 78. So that is pretty easy that we don't need to do anything at Wrexham. Uh, we'll be all right. Over the last eight games... We would um, we would get to eighty nine Mansfield on eighty two point seven eight Wrexham on eighty one point seven five and Milton Keynes Dons on seventy seven point five two so we would be okay there as well. <laughs> any, of those, any of those points per game, we get a uh, a, uh, a um, guard of honour at Wrexham by any of those points per game. If you look at it, yes. Because we've yes. three, three clear minimums. Obviously, very uh, you know, what was the what was the word that you used the other week? Uh, oh, fundamental, I'll say. But yeah, it's because uh, look, Doncaster make the playoffs based on the uh, points per game of the last four. If you look at yeah. that, well, they're five yeah. wins on the bounce, aren't they, Donny? Yeah. yeah. Them and Sutton are the form teams, other than us at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we all know that the old good old cliche: football isn't played on paper. <laughs> <laughs> or in Excel. 
Excel or Power BI. Oh, yeah, or in Excel or PowerPoint, yeah. however you want to. <laughs> the one that was, and I think I think Russ uses this one quite a lot, um, is this one. So this is the maximum and minimum league positions that we can finish as of today. So the, if we lose every single game and everybody else wins every single game, then we will finish eighth. So we'll be out of the playoffs. <laughs> I obviously doubt them very, very much that that's, that is I, I thought that we were now, other than a 40-goal swing from Walsall, I thought we'd make the playoffs. I, th I think I think we have, haven't we? I think it, it's the goal difference thing, isn't it? Yeah. I think this, yeah. I think this doesn't take into account the goal difference, so that will be why there's a possibility that we could. But if we lose every game from now until the end of the season, six games, can we concede forty goals in six games? <laughs> oh well, I don't know. If the team that went to Tranmere turns up, and possibly, yeah. but like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, I don't. I know Russ likes sharing that one. He, 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 I think he updates this every two hours. When he... I love the fact that Walsall and eleventh can still win the title. Can still win the title, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I bet yeah. they're really thinking about it as well. Oh yeah, they still got. They're still in for a chance. Still in with a chance. Brilliant. So all right. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I say the. We've got, we've got stats for everything. Stats for everything. Stats, stats, stats. Tonight. Stats, stats, stats. <laughs> I wonder if, um, you know, if, if the dynamics change a little bit as well. Because, I mean, we've, we had like two or three games, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago where we played after everybody else. So the Salford game and then the Crawley game and then even the MK Dons game, we knew what had happened um, with everybody else's fixtures before those. Um, and then, um, but then effectively on Monday, we went first, didn't we? Because Wrexham were last night and Mansfield was called off. So, you know, it does it, psychologically, it brings a slightly different aspect into it, doesn't it? Um, you know, that's a bit more like, I don't know, I hate to say it like Premier League type thinking, isn't it? Because that happens to them all the time. And we're just used to everyone playing on a Saturday and a Tuesday and that's it. But, well, on that yeah. note, I see that the crew Wrexham game has been brought forward uh, time wise. Yeah, 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 that's twelve thirty now. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you think? I mean, I think it. I think the psychology of that depends on the results, doesn't it? Like as you said, you know, if if Wrexham and Mansfield had both won and gone above us, and yeah. then we play, then the mentality is a bit like, oh shit, we're off the top now. Yeah. Whereas they've played, we've stayed top, and then yeah. you know it, it can go both ways, can't it, Waggy? As, yeah. Uh, yeah. as some will recall on the way back from Yeovil two years ago, and uh, and the marvelous things happening. It was it Woking, Woking, that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 points off Wrexham as we were all sobbing in service stations on the uh, fire. <laughs> <laughs> Cost me a car. Me in, me in a caravan in Western Supermare because we made a bloody miserable <laughs> weekend of it. So yeah, I uh, I um, about about a couple of months before those games that weekend, I went and test drove a car down here, and um, the guy who was in the, the in the car showroom, he said, "Oh yeah, he's, I had a county top on." He said, "Oh, my son plays for Woking," and I said, "All right, okay." I said, "We might need you to take a few points off Wrexham in a couple of weeks," and he said, "Well, if, if they beat Wrexham, will you come back and buy the car?" So, <laughs> so I to, and, I, and I hope he's not watching. <laughs> true, true story. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. So, so there we go. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it is it's, it is a strange dynamic, isn't it? Because I mean, then um, for the MK game, um, the um, some of the people that I normally meet, we met at the normal time, and we watched the Mansfield game in Basque. And we came out of there like you know over the moon. Yeah. And then you know you bounced in when we start, and um, you know well I don't know. This, it's just an interesting little side bit, really. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it'll give it a bit bit of a different dynamic, won't it? And uh, it's very similar to the end of the national league season, though. Very similar, apart from there being more teams probably involved because I think yeah. by this stage it was just us and reps. I think Chesterfield had dropped well and truly out of it by now. But uh, yeah, 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 similarities yeah. and obviously us going to Wrexham late in the season. Yeah. Mm. 
be lovely if the guard of honor also had a plane going over wouldn't it well uh, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure that will happen if 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 that is the case i'm sure that somebody will have a plane out again <laughs> excellent excellent so um should we talk about rob first or shall we put getting the reses should we go about go on then we'll talk to talk to rob so you've said and i have got all the information in front of me somewhere so you said we briefly talked about it. Your first game was Peterborough playoff final, nineteen ninety-two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How come you went to the playoff final? Yeah, well, I um, I come. I was I was what twelve maybe um, around about then, and um, I come from a family of United fans. Um, so um, I'd been, you know, I'd ne I'd never been to a you know a United game, but I you know would, I'd followed them. And um, and I remember we I grew up in Hazel Grove, so I was Stockport all all the way through. But then, um, the, do you remember that there were two Wembley finals in a week, weren't there? All the, the two weeks apart. And um, yeah. and I remember listening to the first one when when they lost to Stoke on like GMR or something like that. Um, and um, and I and I said to my dad as we we're listening to it, I said like, do you know what? I'd really like to go next week. And um, and he went well. All right, okay, and off we went, and um, and I absolutely loved it. Even though we lost, um, you know, we had great seats, and um, you know, I was absolutely gutted coming out, and then that was my first game. So let alone, you know, what everybody else must have felt who followed them, um, you know, all all through that season, and then um, and then there was a there was a friend of my mum and dad's who was a season ticket holder at County. And he said, "Oh well, if you enjoyed the Wembley, I'll, I'll take you to Edgeley Park," and the um, and the first game of the following season, I seem to remember, was Chester at home in like the very early rounds of like the auto windscreen shield or something like that. And then, um, and that was it. I was hooked. hooked. Um, and then, um, and have been since. And then, um, you know, despite, I mean, even, even moving away, um, it's, um, yeah, I, I just get back as much as I can. In fact, um, I've got tickets for every game left, even a Wrexham ticket. Um, and if I, uh, providing everything goes well, I'll have done 31, 32 games this season, something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Um, Excellent. So, um, yeah, well played. Because, yeah, because you, you, you live down that there, London way, don't you, in the, in the big smoke? <laughs> uh, I li yeah, I live, in, I live in a little village called Bramley in North Hampshire, which is um, between Basingstoke and Reading, basically. Right. Um, about three and a half hours in the car or on the train, depending on, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a long old way, um, but um, you know the thing is, you know, I did it. I did it for the Newport game, and you think, you know, like you could have spent hundred quid on the train and like hundred quid staying in the Holiday Inn, and then you know, etc., etc., etc. And to be there for that moment when he puts the ball in the net in the ninety third minute, it, it's, yeah, it's, really, it's worth every penny, isn't it? Like that, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you hop you hop back down onto the station and you get on the train and you're still smiling when you get off in Reading and. Yeah, yeah. You can't. There's only and there's only so there's only people who do it. Not necessarily just county fans, but football fans. There's only them or sports fans, perhaps. It's only them that really understand. You know, some people look at you as if like you're absolutely mad. Mental. Um, yeah. And then um, you know, but yeah, I just I just come as often as I can. Yeah, love it. So, do you, have you got a season ticket? Then, or do you yeah. just buy? You have got a season ticket, right? Yeah, I began to struggle last year um, with um, getting tickets for the aways. Right. Uh, and um, and there's no way I've not made a season ticket pay this year, but it's been handy um, for you know the smaller allocation away game away games, um, yeah. to um, to have it. So I've probably my my 32 games is probably split fairly equally between home and away, slightly more away, but it's fairly equally split. Because there's not that many games local to me. I mean, the National League was great. National League, like, yeah, I was going to say National Wolverine League. And Eastley and Maidenhead and, you know, yeah. all, all really pretty close by. Um, down there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but um, but real, I mean, the closest, the, probably the easiest one for me is actually Swindon um, this year. Right. Um, so, um, but yeah, um, 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, season ticket for the first time this year for quite a few years. Um, but um, but yeah, so it's just brilliant. And um, yeah, kids kids have got season tickets as well. Um, so yeah, I drag them up with me as much as I can. They absolutely love it. So yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good, isn't it? And then yeah, favorite games: Chesterfield away, nineteen ninety seven. Uh, when we won promotion. Yep. By that point, the, the, the middle to late nineties, I was constantly drunk, so I remember nothing. <laughs> As you could tell when we used to do the quiz with Nick. <laughs> That's when my signal goes. Um, yeah, the, um, yeah, I mean that. I mean that was just brilliant, wasn't it? Because um, that was the that was the stage where we'd all been a bit concerned, just because that was one of the seasons where we had loads of games in hand, wasn't it? Because we'd yeah. had all the cup runs. All the cup runs, and, um, yeah. So, yeah, um, but I remember going and we scored. I think Brett Angel scored after about five minutes. Um, yeah. And, of course, it, it went electric. But we just couldn't get that second goal despite trying. And then um, it was just, it was a long, it was a long gold night after that. But it was just brilliant. And uh, and I can still, I can still remember one of my, it's one of my earliest real footballing memories. Is, um, there was a guy, um, an old guy, stood on the terraces in front of me at full time. And he was just standing there and he was just crying. Um, and um, he, he couldn't clap or cheer or, and he was, and he, and he, and he, and I sort of put my arm around him and I was like, Are you all right? And he said, This is the happiest night of my football in life. And, you know, and I, bless him, he may not even be with us anymore. I don't know. Uh, it's a long time ago. But, um, you know, it's just, there are just like over the years, I mean, what is it now, 30 odd, there's, there's just so many lovely memories as well. So, yeah, I've got something in there, a hero and villain of those two games. Your first game, villain, because he was playing for the other team and scored the winner. Yes. And a hero yes. that night because he kept the ball in the corner flag for about 43 minutes. In the yeah. second night. Mr. Mr. Charlery. Yeah. Charlery. Yeah. 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 Mm. Hero yeah. and villain of those two games. How bizarre. Yeah. Unbelievable. Isn't it? That's why we have you on for the facts because I didn't know. I, I, yeah. I'll just yeah. stick to this. It was his one contribution, really, to the club, <laughs> holding the ball in the corner at Chesterfield. It's all he did. It's on a statue somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who stood just like that, holding yeah, the ball? Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a flag yeah. and a cigar. <laughs> and then, yeah, more recently. Two absolutely yeah, classic games. Bolton at home, where we won five three uh, in the cup. That was just. I mean, that I think that's up there in pretty much every yeah. every county fans. In this. I mean, I mean um, Ash Palmer was um, was was one of my favourites, um, and um, I think it wasn't it wasn't just that I that goal when he scored because obviously we've pretty much been building up to that goal for the whole of the second half, haven't we? But. It, yeah. It got so late, it was like, is it going to come or not? But for me, looking back, that moment, that moment changed everything. It was the, it was the moment that the, the belief almost came flooding back into the club almost yeah. and into the fan base and into, and it, and it was, it was absolutely huge. And every time I look back and, uh, you know, and you watch it and there's like that wonderful moment where the ball hits the net and then there's the cheer and and it's it's just brilliant, but it is. It, I look at that because it was only like Challen as what well, like third, third game, game. Maybe, something yeah, like that. I game. think wasn't it? His first one was the away game, wasn't it? Yes, um, yes, yeah. And it, and it was just. And then they played someone someone at home in the league and drawn, and they um, yeah, and the from the league. League. And it, and um, and it was just it was that that moment just felt to me like the, yeah, the belief just came running back through the fan base, the club, and we were on our way again. And it, it turned the season, I think, and, and look at the journey it started. So, yeah, so yeah that was, yeah. Definitely, because we just got over Steve, we got over Steve Rusk, haven't we? Um, with, with, with Rusk Wall. Yeah, I think we were yeah. still getting over at that point, I think, weren't we? But, well, I think, I mean, but I, it, it, that was, I mean, brilliant. But I, I, went, to, I went to Bolton away when we drew 2-2. And the space, he's only been in charge like three days, haven't he? And the yeah. difference in the players and the playing style and everything, yeah. the identity that we yeah. had straight away when he became when he got in, became in manager, you could just see the difference. And yeah. that, as you say, I think the <coughs> Portland game epitomised everything. It was yeah. 
just the yeah. justice because Ash scored that own goal to start yeah. with, you know, and him to get the to get the equaliser to take it to extra time. It yeah. was just yeah, yeah, absolutely superb. And, and then, then like, yeah. two oh. two days two days after that, or because it was a Wednesday night, one at the Bolton, and then the yeah, following Saturday, BBC, yeah. um, we were away at Woking um, in the National League, and um, that's the first game I ever took my little boy to. Um, and because um, he, I've been, you know, been talking to him about it, and he's playing for a little team and stuff, and the tail, and and, uh, and he was like, "I want to come, I want to come." We're like, great, and um, and he hasn't looked back either. He goes, you know, he goes to football training down here now in a county kit. Oh, brilliant! His mates have all got Chelsea and you know all the rest of it, and he's there with his Vita and his, you know, it's fantastic. Does he get asked who his who's Premier League team is? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He's developed the look, though. It's brilliant. You know, the yeah. sort of like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. You just obviously you mentioned Halifax, but we'll go on. Your favourite players, uh, Mickey Flynn, you mentioned Ash yeah. Palmer and Ben Hinchliff. Yeah, I think all really good candidates there, really good candidates. Yeah, um, and Hinchliff now is um, Golden Glove, isn't he? He's, is well, he's, he's, he's one ahead of the Wimbledon guy, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so that was another really good thing about that came out of uh, Monday morning. Yeah, another clean sheet, and he's yeah, he's on top of the charts. So yeah, Ash Palm was just he was yeah he was just a rock, wasn't he? And and yeah. again, he has he he's got another promotion with Chesterfield. Yeah. You would hope he'd get a chance in League Two. I'm not sure. I think I've got a feeling he might drop back down to the National League, maybe Oldham or Rochdale or someone like that. He might get Possibly. another promotion with them. So you would hope you would hope that he'd get another one. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. He's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, superb. So uh, I think that's the, oh yes, obviously getting the resers. The resers. Uh, let me see. Can I can I find the get in the resers? Where is it? There it is. There we go. Resers. Get in the resers. Get in the resers. Not having that. Get in the resers. Oh, get in resers. I know for one thing, I will never ever be in charge of this again, apart from next week because Russ is away again next week. So. <laughs> Car crash two. Here we go. <laughs> So uh, I will go last uh, because I've not got one apart from putting this episode in the resins. Uh, so <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do because of that. Rob, you can have one getting the resins. We'll give Mark one getting the resins and then we'll give you a second getting the resins. How's that? Wow. Okay. There you go. Privilege, you see. I'm the new global leader and, leader and evil mastermind of TSBW, so <laughs> yeah. it's my call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't here, so I'm up, I'm up for it. So go on, give Brilliant. us your first getting the resers. All right. Well, um, first one is referees. And it's not like they're all rubbish, they're all biased, they're all whatever. Um, I just I just feel like they could do a lot more to keep the games flowing. I get sick of, you know, the a corner or a free kick is given. And, you know, the, the crowd get going and there's momentum. And then they spend like five minutes like going, oh, well, don't push him. Don't do that. Stop that. Don't that. And then, and then ev you lose everything. And then they blow the whistle and the whole thing happens again. But it's all right that time. Some, some of, you know, the pushing and shoving doesn't stop. And then like, um, if there's a penalty, they have to make a big song and dance about telling the keeper that he's got to be on yeah. his line. He knows the rule. You know, it, it, it's just... <laughs> Okay. You know, and, um, Which is, this is Rob Rob rants, not Waggy rants. <laughs> I'm loving you know, it. If, if there's a free kick, Rob, if, if there's a free kick, count to three to see if there's an advantage. You know, let's just see if we can let the game flow. If, kudos to the guy at Forest Green because um, our second goal was off an advantage. Um, but as a general rule, just see if there's an advantage. You know, to be yeah. had. Um, and then, and then, very lastly, um, or oh, I, I, I can't promise it's the last one. Last one for now. Um, book the first instance of time wasting during a game. I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Mister Newport goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> I think 
you know, um, obviously, you know, you we we're not getting rid of shit houseery, and there's a, it has its place. And um, if you stamp on on one bit, then a team will find another way of doing it. I'm not daft enough to think that. But I do think that they could stamp down on the time wasted a little bit sooner in the game. And if you did it sooner, they wouldn't be able to do it for the rest of the game once on a yellow. So there you are, Re referees. As I said earlier, to be fair, the Wimbledon, they didn't go for that. They, they, they were shit out in different ways. And, you know, it was uh, physical. Um, well, not shit out obviously. It was uh, just... They, uh, they they were very physical, very direct, but they didn't time waste. To be absolutely fair to them, and uh, you know. but again, um, I go back to the to the club call. We mentioned we we talk about the referee and mention ref watch as we want as we call it, and against Wimbledon, he just let pretty much everything go, every free kick, every set piece. There was yeah. every single town there's at least one of our one or two of our players on the floor with his his shirt halfway off off his head type of thing, and the referee was like, "Yeah, that's all right, carry on." You know what I mean? It, it's just it, it, we we were doing similar to Joe Lewis at most set pieces though, because he was kind think, of he was going from the back post to the front post to try and get the flick on, and we weren't letting him anywhere near it. But the way we were stopping him getting near it, if you would have spotted it, it wasn't. Uh, Totally illegal, you know. So, yeah, I think he, yeah, I think he made it. He called in the. I'm not giving anything like that. Um, yeah. After Apart his, from uh, the penalty. Penalty. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I've looked at that. I mean, he, he does trip him. To he does fair. touch him, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, obviously, the, uh, there's the same referee that uh, gave the penalty to Wrexham that was three yards outside the box. Um, much yeah. declined. Set, no I doubt. think somebody somebody said as I, I think it was Dan on the club call said that referee that we had on Monday has actually refereed two Premier League games this season. He's obviously screwed right up. <laughs> 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 but I think, again, it, it's, I, I suppose a follow-on, maybe I could claim this as a bit of a getting the reses, but it's that hierarchy that if you're not going enough for the Premier League, you get dropped to the championship, but if you shit in the championship, you get down to League One, and then that. So we just get the absolute dross that's left. <laughs> but that's some big fall in one season, isn't it? From play, Premier League to League Two. So, yeah. So go on, Mark. You go well, on. well, my my mine's a bit controversial because no doubt some of the people who are our viewers, listeners, will be some of the contributors to this. No. But I, um, <laughs> I can't stand it. I can't abide comments on the social media pre-match team sheet slagging off the selection. And there was one that I had to just rip apart on Friday, which was one guy who'd suggested about what has Wotton done to deserve his place in this team and so on. And, and I just... Uh, I went into a bit of a rant about, well, there's this guy called Dave who he makes all the decisions and he's quite good at it. Um, he also works with them five days a week and he's probably seen things that you don't know about and so on. And, um, yeah, it's have an opinion, but don't go overboard with crap tactical shouts and that, you know, there's a reason he's starting. And, you know, 12 months ago we were, as we said earlier in this episode, saying... How do we play without Wooks? So that, that was one that just brought me to a boil on Friday. And, I think uh, there was a lot of that. If anybody goes to go back to the Twitter of the team sheet on Friday, you can read the monologue. I'll, 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 I'll go back. I'll definitely go back and have a look. But I think there was a lot of that with uh, Powell earlier in the season. Yeah. Um, but when you actually watched him properly, <clears throat> He was on a different level to everybody else, so it looked, you know, he'd, he'd look for a, a ball over the top and think that Tanto's going to go, but Tanto didn't didn't think or didn't know, you know, we're not on the same wavelength, so he didn't go. But then the ball just teeters out for a for a goal kick, so things like that. That you know, as you say, it, it, it he's been quietly going about his job, hasn't he, Wotton? And it's the same. I did, have to, I did have to stop myself on Monday from commenting on the lineup, saying, "Was Hinchliff done to deserve a place today?" He did nothing on Friday. He did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I, 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 he was, he was shocking. No contribution <laughs> at all at Forest Green. Absolutely nothing on Friday. Why is he in the team? Yeah. 
Um, and the other one, because I think we just need to quickly say, is the EFL um, awards announcement today, which, granted, we've not had many players who've played anything more than about 30 games this season. So I get why we've not got too many players in the mix. But uh, Lee Bell for manager of the season from Crewe. I know, and Williamson from MK Dons, I understand he's done a good job since coming in, but he's not been there for the season. He's not really... Absolutely get that. Absolutely get why Clough's in there, of course. Yeah, but... Well, yeah, but... He's got Lindsay from Crawley as well. I mean, nobody thought Crawley would be where they are, did they? Yeah, uh, I think there's been a lot of challenges. Yeah, Lindsay from Crawley, Pete Wilde, you know, fist bump in the air and so on, because of what they've done with what they've got and yeah. you know um but no and then i think our only representation in any of them is ethan pye has been nominated only for yeah, in, yeah really player and manager yeah. one EF, yeah player young player of the season young player of the season for league two but we've also got olivia um as the um what's she up for uh efl club employee award oh, uh, so um yeah olivia hanley uh, yeah. I think she's, she's in the ticket office, isn't she? Yeah. She does a bit of everything. She gets I think involved. She is, yeah. Yeah. She but she's, up, she's yeah. up against a lady from Leighton Orient and a lady from Leeds United as well. So I'm guessing that that's one per league. Um, yeah. So that's that's a good shout. So yeah. everybody everybody, get onto the EFL, EFL website. Vote for Olivia. Vote for... Uh, vote for some pie. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you could choose your flavour, but you could definitely vote well, for that. You could only have a vegan one at Forest Green. They won't be vegan. <laughs> yeah, he said they missed, they missed a trick there. Definitely, the, Greg should have had a drive-through, shouldn't he? Like, like within ten, within two miles of that place, and they'd have made an absolute fortune. <laughs> Just by the park and ride where I had to park. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Poor Greg's at the park and ride. The laughing. <laughs> So yeah, I think definitely everything that we said can get in the reses is getting in the reses. There's no disagreements, I don't think. Um, Do you know it's it's funny, Mark, because um, my uh, my second reses is um, is almost identical to yours, but just on a slightly wider point. It's it's the need somehow for a scapegoat. Um, you know, it's been Torre. It, like you say, it's been Powell. Is it Wooten now for some people? Um, some, I mean, I've, I'm, on, I'm on groups and stuff where people have had a go at Tanto. Now, if you if you want to give me a shit striker that's going to score 20 goals next season, then I'll take that. You know, it, it's and it, but the, the whole the whole point is, you know, we're all going to have our favourites. We're all going to have people that we don't rate. We're all going to chat about what all the all the things that go on in Basque or the courtyard or whatever. But when they pull on the blue shirt, just bloody get behind him and yeah. um, and it's just. You know, the, and the, and I think you find. I mean, I don't know whether they watch things like this or read the yellow board or things, but it does get through to them. You know, they they will know if people are having a go at them, and there's just no need for it. They're playing for the club that we love. We get behind them. Yeah, yeah. very good mate of mine who sits in the uh, main stand in the Danny Bigara stand said a few weeks back, Ibi Torre literally shrunk into his shirt that game that he got subbed at half time. Because he was just getting an absolute torrent of abuse yeah. from the main stand, basically. You know, every time he went backwards, yeah, he didn't have a great half and probably did deserve to come off at Bristow on the half time. Uh, I think that was the Newport game, was it? I think, or something yeah, like I think that. Right. Yeah, what exactly. a turn right from Salford game where he scored. So, yeah. Um, but um, on the Tanto one, the day after the playoff final, and I'll find the clip if need be on this very podcast. I said Tanto's our twenty goal striker next season, and I could find. I'd love to find all the comments telling me I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just take that one and go. <laughs> there we go, Mike. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think I've pretty much. Uh, enjoyed my first episode as uh, global leader for, uh, for, <laughs> for TSBW. Um, hopefully it'll be a bit smoother next week. Uh, it will be me again in charge of everything. I'll try and pull some more comments and stuff up as we go. I'm just 
trying to trying to keep trying to get everything keep everything going i'd rather just talk uh, <laughs> it's a lot easier than <laughs> trying to keep an eye on all the comments and stuff but anyway thank you everybody for joining us uh do please like the video it helps for the algorithms if you do subscribe please uh do subscribe we on patreon we have the courtyard club call every monday which is released ad free on monday and then it's released um with ads around wednesday or thursday this as well if you're a patron subscriber is uh should be posted straight after this uh without any adverts and stuff and then we will have adverts and all on your favorite podcasting type things so please like subscribe thank you everybody for joining us Apologies to Mark. Apologies to Rob. I hope it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> <Quite enjoyed myself. laughs> good, 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 good. So, everybody, thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Oh, no. Where's it gone? There it is. This episode of the Scarf Begawa War was written, recorded, and produced by Russ Johnson and Nick Lee. The music on the opening titles was produced by Dan Johnson. Subscribe wherever you get your content, as well as finding out how to join the TSBW fan club. Check out the links in the description or go to all the W's, scarfbegarawar.co.uk.